Shalom. It's Reuben Abramov, the Haftorah man, and this week's Haftorah is Shabbat Chazon, or Shabbat of the prophecy of Isaiah. After Moses, Isaiah was the most spiritually elevated prophet. Yeshayahu, that God is my Savior. And he lived in a time before the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, and he was a mighty prophet who saw God's heavenly throne figuratively lifting itself up and away from the Beit HaMikdash, just like Ezekiel. So, this is the third of the trilogy of the Haftarot that come before Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is the date that is the anniversary of the destruction of both the first and the second Beit HaMikdashes, the holy temples. Interestingly, Tisha is Tisha, and on the calendar of when Rosh Hashanah is in Tishrei, Av is the 11th month. Yes, 9-11. This was the spiritual 9-11, where the biggest temple came crumbling down to the ground that was destroyed by the world's evil superpower of the time, the Babylonians. So what is this Haftarah about? Why are we reading it just before Tisha B'Av? And God is always trying to give us a chance to stop in our evil ways. So, let's begin. Chazon Yeshayahu, the prophecy of Isaiah, the son of Amotz, that he, they were Kohanim and Nevi'im, they were priests and prophets. And these prophecies were talking about Judea, the ten northern tribes are long gone, Judea is left, and now you have Jerusalem, not only Yehuda, the state, but Jerusalem as well. Isaiah lasted through four kings. They all passed away during his reign. Uziyahu, Yotam, Ahaz, and Yechizkiyahu. The Haftarah begins. <laughs> we use the heavens and the earth as witnesses, not human beings. They've been here before, every man that is involved with these problems, and they will be here long after. And it says, I don't understand, God is saying through the prophet, I brought you up, and then you rebel against me? It says a donkey, even a dumb donkey, knows its master. When it gets beaten, it understands that it has to do something. But you guys, you don't get it. You don't understand. The Haftarah continues by saying that I don't want your sacrifices anymore. I'm not interested in hearing the crackling of these sacrifices that you do Avera, you do sins, and then you say to yourself, well, I'll go to the Beit HaMikdash, I'll go to the Holy Temple, I'll offer up a sacrifice, and I will be cleansed of my sins. God says, <laughs> not interested. I see through it. He says, the way you keep the holidays, the way you keep Shabbat, the way you keep Yom Tovim, it's a joke. The way you daven, your way you pray, that you hold your hands up to the heavens and you say, oh, Hashem, you don't understand what you're saying. Or if you do understand what you're saying, you don't even mean it. And I ask people, oh, ooh, you have to dress a certain way, you have to do all these external things. The most simplest test in my book is if someone says, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, you make a blessing on a glass of water. Shahakol Nihiya Bidvaro that everything came in, into existence with God saying so. Really, ask 10 people if they understand that bracha. Ask 10 people if they understand what the word vayichulu means. Please, you'll be very surprised that the very fundamental conversations that people have with God, they don't know what they're saying. I hope I'm wrong. So then, the Haftarah continues that the way you treat other people is horrible. You think that you're being nice, you're being divisive, you're being argumentative, you're boxing with God, you're boxing with your wife, you're boxing with your children, you're boxing with your boss, countries box with their countries, no one's getting along, Ashkenazim, Sephardim, whatever it is. There was no Ashkenazim and Sephardim when Isaiah was alive. Then, judging that they're talking about the court systems are corrupt, that they can't get a fair trial, the widows and the orphans, because they don't have money to bribe the judges. 
that money is going to become worthless. And remember, whatever sins you do, I'm backing up a little bit, whatever sins you do, guess what? Even if you are red from sin and you do teshuvah, you're only going to become off-white. When you do a sin yourself privately and then you do teshuvah repentance, you can go to white. But if you sin and create other people sinning, enroll other people into your vision, then guess what? You could clean up your mess, but then you can't clean up their mess, and then theirs mess is mess. So God says, be careful how you influence other people. And then God says, that's it. You used to be my adversary, no longer. Now we're adversarial. We used to be together, now we're against each other. And I'm going to come down hard on you, and I will take revenge. But, listen to this, ray of hope for the future for the Messianic age. The Haftarah completes and ends with Isaiah saying that in the time of the Messiah, the judges will be straight and they will be honest and the city of Jerusalem will be called Ir Hatzedek, or the city of justice. And Sion, Zion, Mount Zion, right where the Beit HaMikdash was, will be redeemed from its sins with Sedek, with justice, and her returnees will have tzedakah with righteousness, that they will be doing good things. So all in all, we're getting bowled out. We're getting thrown out of the land of Israel. We're going to be out for a while. But then God reassures us, all will be well one day for the people that glue themselves and come close to me and love me. And I will love them back in the holy city of Jerusalem for eternity. Shabbat Shalom. Sweat through the beginning of the Haftarah and enjoy the end.